The Web 3.0 in crypto space holds endless opportunities to make life-changing money, but it's also filled with landmines and trap doors that can cause you to instantly lose everything that you've gained with just the tiniest mistake. We see people's wallets get hacked for millions of dollars in crypto and NFTs. People do simple things like lose their private key or their seed phrase, which causes them to lose access to their funds. In this video, I want to talk about a potential solution to some of these major problems that's really holding crypto back from achieving everything it could be, and how this solution could prepare us for mass adoption of this technology that everyone's waiting for. I'm going to talk about all that in this video today as a blockchain developer myself who works this technology on a daily basis. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to become a blockchain master, step by step, start to finish, land your first six figure job, then head on over to adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so let's get into this. Let's talk about some of the major problems that are holding the crypto space back from mass adoption, like people getting hacked and also losing access to their wallets and a solution for this that we have needed for a very long time, one that Vitalik Buterin himself, the mastermind behind Ethereum, has been calling for, but how the solution really is on the cusp of adoption and how it could be a massive game changer for the entire space as a whole. So what is it? Well, it's the idea of account abstraction. I want to talk about exactly what it is, what types of problems it solves, and people who are working on this. Because if you want to stay up to date with this space and understand where it's headed, you know, two steps down the road, then you need to watch this whole video. All right, so let's start off with a description of the problem before we get to the solution here. So let's take a use case, the most probably most common use case people use blockchains for, which is just trading cryptocurrencies. So let's see yeah, how people doing this in a decentralized way. Think about the most popular application like Uniswap, for example, right? How do people normally use Uniswap? Okay, well, they usually connect with their uh, MetaMask wallet to a web browser, and they talk to the Uniswap interface, and they tell it, you know, which tokens they have and which one token they receive. They click a couple buttons, and then the swap happens on the blockchain. And that looks something vaguely like this, where basically they connect their wallet to a browser that talks to some the smart contracts on the blockchain and makes the swap happen. So um, inside of this, you know, the key things to understand is that, you know, whenever you have a MetaMask wallet, that is really, you know, your account that has a private key and a public key. And you're signing transactions with your private key in order to authorize this. Now, this comes with a number of problems. Like number one, anytime you use any swap and you trade tokens, like you have to sign multiple transactions to approve the tokens and also to swap them. It's really bad user experience. Uh, for example, if you lose this access to this private key for this particular wallet, you know, all your funds are completely gone. All right. And if somebody else likewise gained access to your private key or you signed the wrong approval message on your wallet, okay, they can completely drain your account of all your crypto and all your NFTs. So that's a description of the problem. And it really centers around the fact that you have this single uh, wallet here that you're using to connect your browser that does all the transactions are here, okay? So this uh, wallet or this account is what's called an externally owned account. So blockchains, you know, like Ethereum, for example, support two types of accounts. Like if you have ever an address that represents your account address, you can have an externally owned account, which is just like your MetaMask wallet where you're signing transactions. You can also have smart contract based accounts, which are, you know, accounts that belong to smart contracts because they also have addresses. So right now, pretty much all user interactions are happening from externally owned accounts. But what account abstraction does is it takes your account and turns it into a smart contract where you can just sign, you know, one transaction and then your smart contract that represents your account can do so many other things that your current account can't do. So let's look at exactly how that works so you can see the benefits and how this can, you know, be one major piece in the chain and connect a lot of other pieces that can make this a seamless user experience that could rival what users experience now on web 2.0 all right so let's talk about the first major why which is basically having a wallet because it can do multiple things that your current wallet doesn't already do i, so, I mentioned this a minute ago but i want to drive it home here so like whenever you go use uniswap and you swap tokens you always have to sign like two messages every single time you make a swap if you're swapping an erc20 token one is the approval message to let uniswap spend tokens on your behalf Okay, the other one is the actual swap functionality. Some people complain about the user experience of approve, saying it's an anti-pattern, et cetera, et cetera, but it's here today and account abstraction can fix this, okay? So how is it the case? Well, if you take this wallet here and you turn it into a smart contract-based wallet, okay, that's written in Solidity. So Solidity has something called multi-call in it where you can essentially batch transactions all into a single transaction. And then you know your MetaMask wallet, which you might still use, could just sign the authorization for this and then your smart contract does everything and all you have to do is sign it one go and then you can perform 
multiple interactions without having to click a million buttons. And this is currently impossible any other way without account abstraction. And so this small boost alone could be enough to really help the user experience to bring it to a much closer level to what people are already used to in Web 2.0 right now. So you don't have to do a bazillion button clicks just to do one thing. All right, so reason number two is basically recovering your wallet in case you lose access to it, okay? So again, if most people are just connecting with like a MetaMask wallet to their browser to interact with smart contracts or anything in blockchain, you know, that wallet is controlled by a private key or a seed phrase, depending on how you back up access to your account. And if you lose that, it's a major issue. Like it's just completely gone. Sure, you might put, you know, half your seed phrase in a lockbox somewhere and give the other half to your, your parents or your brother or something like that. But that's still a major issue. And Vitalik Buterin himself, you know, the mastermind behind Ethereum has been talking about the need for a wide adoption of social recovery wallets. And that's exactly what account abstraction could do. So basically, the whole idea is that instead of having to back up your seed phrase or back up your private key, okay, and you had a abstracted account that was had a smart contract associated with it, you could essentially have guardians, okay, which you add to your uh, wallet. So you could list like, let's say three people or five people. And if you lost access to that wallet smart contract, or sorry, the original private key to the wallet that you normally sign transactions with, what those trusted guardians could do could specify a new private key, okay, that is able to authorize signed transactions for this. So you could have people that aren't going to game the system to give everybody access to that. If you had trust other people, they could just sign transactions. If you lost your private key, okay, so just swap it out for this new address that you have verified that you own and then boom, you know, you have access to your funds again. All right, so another big reason is the idea of session wallets, okay? So what is that? All right, so let's talk about you know, going to an application where you need to sign a bunch of transactions in order to make the user experience actually worthwhile. So I used the, you know, example of Uniswap before with a couple different clicks to make a swap. But think about playing a blockchain-based game, okay, where you actually have a lot of things that actually need to take place in the chain. Like, nobody's going to play the game if they had to sit there and just sign every single transaction in order to move their character from one spot to another or make any type of, you know, transaction inside the game, all right? So what you could do is create session-based wallets, okay, that where, where you go play a game, like now you have a, a wallet that's special for your either account on the game or just that session that you're playing on the game that could authorize all the transactions that are required for this. So again, you know, this, this wallet's going to be a smart contract, but you have to understand like Solidity and the EVM and smart contracts have the ability to create new smart contracts on demand with factories, okay? And so what you could do is, it, you know, let's say you have your MetaMask wallet or whatever connected to the browser, Whenever you go launch the game for the first time, you might sign a transaction to create your session wallet, okay? And then that's going to do all the multi-call behind the scenes that could authorize a bunch of different transactions. And maybe all you have to do is just sign the initial thing to create your wallet and then do a bunch of like soft signing in the game, okay, with some other user experience. And then all those can transactions could, you know, essentially take place. And if you had to withdraw any funds whenever you destroyed your session, you could just, you know, sign a final message to take your funds out and then exit the game. So this is kind of bringing things back home to a really similar type of web 2.0 experience where you have the idea of sessions where you log into a website, okay? And then you do a bunch of stuff and then you log out, okay? You can kind of do that now with your MetaMask, but this is actually giving you a session that's tied to a specific application where the information for that session is actually stored on chain and you're able to do this in a trustless and transparent way where you can actually see what's happening. That's how it's different from web 2.0. And you could just destroy your session at any time. All right, so those are some of the biggest reasons that you want to abstract accounts away from the current model, okay? Some other things like, you know, two-factor authentication or basically having plugins to your wallet, okay? But now I actually want to talk about the implementation for this, like the dirty details about how it's going to work and who's working on this and a potential future so you can see how this could look exactly like Web 2.0 or, or what I would say rival the experience of Web 2.0 where you can get all the benefits of Web 3.0 sort of glued together, okay? So one major player in this space that I want to talk about is Argent, okay? So this is a crypto wallet um, that works on mobile and they've written several uh, Twitter threads uh, about this whole thing that I've drawn heavily from in making this video. So full credit to Argent. Again, this is not a sponsored video or anything like that. This is something that's really important to understand. So first, I want to talk about how account abstraction is really not a new idea. Again, Vitalik's been calling for this for a long time. We've seen d different Ethereum improvement proposals and topics that come up about this since 2016. So it's, it's not a new idea, but there have been many attempts at getting here, okay, and there's some different uh, sort of implementations, some of which where, you know, you have smart contracts that are, uh, you know, controlling accounts versus some things that actually let, you know, contracts take control over external accounts, some things that take the accounts away. Okay, I don't want to get into all the crazy details about that. 
Uh, you can definitely check out this thread from Argent. I'll put a link to this down in the description below if you want to. It talks about the different EIPs that are being adopted, like EIP 2938, et cetera, et cetera, or 3074. But the big picture is we have yet to really see account abstraction take its form natively on layer one Ethereum that we know and use today. But we are seeing certain implementations of the account abstraction that I'm talking about here today all right, on major layer two scaling solutions like ZK Sync and also StarkNet. So what does that mean and why is it important? So uh, if you don't know what a layer two is, basically this is how you make Ethereum faster and cheaper to use today. So this is the long-term end game for Ethereum scaling is not necessarily to make layer one Ethereum that everybody knows you use today faster and cheaper to use, although we'll get there uh, somewhat, all right? But this is basically taking a second environment where you do most of the transactions and then you batch them up and you roll them up and you put them back on the main chain or you derive the security from layer one Ethereum, okay? So this is how you achieve like 100x scalability with Ethereum in the long term, okay? And we have those now. You can go to a website like l2beat.com. You can see a list of really popular ones like Arbitrum, Optimism, et cetera, et cetera. Now, two big players like ZK Sync, like I was talking about, and also StarkNet have implemented account abstraction and are actively working on, you know, adding this. And now why this is a big deal is because, because you know, if a layer two is supposed to be the end game for Ethereum scaling long term, then we don't necessarily need it implemented completely into layer one Ethereum. If it's just implemented in widely adopted layer twos, then that could be good enough because that, that may be the way that primary consumers actually use blockchains in the future. And so if you're sort of tracking with me, if we want to get Web3 apps to get to the point where they can actually rival the user experience of Web2 apps, we need scalability, so that's what layer twos do. We need the ability to like click one button and do a lot of different stuff on the back end, okay? That's what account abstraction is doing. And then now we need to get away from this broken model where everybody has to just have like a MetaMask wallet in their browser and then go buy some crypto on a sketchy exchange and then like, you know, move it there and then or they're gonna lose their money. And that's where Argent really comes into play, okay? And other mobile wallets too, of course, but uh, Argent's been talking about this a lot and how they're working with account abstraction. So I wanted to bring it up and talk about this video, getting out sponsored. Just, just an important piece of the puzzle here. So, um, you know, most people use their phone for, uh, you know, a lot of stuff when they use Web 2.0 right now, especially like social media, most of your day-to-day -day stuff, probably a majority of your activity is spent on your phone. So that's not necessarily true for Web 3.0. And this is a way where you can glue all the pieces together to actually make it more like that. So um, the beauty of something like Argent being a, a very sophisticated mobile wallet is that they can implement this account abstraction with Layer 2 to get that scalability where a user could just pull up their phone and use a dApp, okay, and then unlock all the benefits of Web 3.0, where they might have a funding device already on their phone, like Apple Pay or Android Pay, a few clicks of a button, have, you know, currency inside their application, and they can start, you know, accessing Web 3.0 applications fast, quickly, you know, just get onboarded, you know, within minutes, and can make fast, cheap transactions where they don't have to really understand what's going on behind the scenes, they just get the benefits, and then have to worry about what happens if they, you know, lose their password, so to speak, and they're not worried about, like, losing all the money out of their accounts, and these experiences is totally fast and seamless, and that is how we get to the point where, you know, this technology can really just blow up. And this core piece that I'm talking about today, of actually abstracting the account activity away to a different layer, could be a pretty big part in this uh, equation. All right, so that's all I got for today. As always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you already. I hope you like this video. And you know, if you're fascinated with what I'm talking about today and you really want to go for the throat, uh, become a blockchain master, what can you do? You can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find those free courses there that like you to make courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you went to the next step or hey, you know, maybe just take a master shortcut entirely, you know, you become a blockchain developer, change your career, earn your first six figure salary. Yeah, I can show you how to do that over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You don't have to be an expert to get started today. I thought people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.